Hi, I'm Gwen McCoslin. I am with the South Dakota Agricultural Heritage Museum, and today we are in the lovely McCrory Gardens, a botanical gardens here at South Dakota State University. We're going to be teaching you how to dye with plants. This is a three-part series, and this particular lesson will be on the dyeing process. First step is, what are the tools that you need? First off, you need a non-reactive pot, whether it's stainless steel or enamel. Be sure that there are no chips or any rust spots in your enamel because that will also affect the color of your dye. You'll need a burner, whether it's an indoor burner or outdoor. You need a scale to measure your dye plant material as well as your wool. Your fiber, whether it's plant or animal fiber, today we'll be focusing only on how to dye with wool. And you need plenty of water. First step is you need to, to weigh how much wool you actually are going to be dyeing. The wool to your plant material, depending on what plants you use, will be a one to one or maybe a two to one. So twice as much plant fiber as there is your wool. When you have measured your wool and you've figured out exactly how much your plant material you're going to need, you're going to soak it for one to two hours in just plain water. The fibers of your wool are just like hair follicles with scales and they need to swell up or open up so it can absorb the dye material and the pigment. This has already been pre-mortented and it's been dried and then you have to soak it for at least one to two hours and sometimes longer depending on the type of mordant. This has been dyed with alum. Second is you need to weigh how much of your plant material. As I said before, sometimes it's a one to one or a two to one. This in particular is purple basil. You fill a pot full of water and you place the purple basil inside the pot. It's basically my, making like a giant cup of tea. The hot water method is you place the plant material in the pot and you bring that up to 80 degrees, 80 to 90 degrees Celsius or around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. You do not want this to boil. You basically let it simmer for about 60 minutes. After it's been simmering for 60 minutes, you let it cool. One to two hours, sometimes even overnight, depending on how strong of a color you want in your dye pot. After that, you strain out the material and it's ready to be used for a dye. After your dye pot has cooled, you then add your wet wool to the dye pot. You then let this simmer, again bring it back up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius, and you let that simmer for an additional hour. Make sure that you push down the wool throughout that 60 minutes to make sure that all of the fibers have been evenly submerged into the pigment. Depending on the type of mordant you used will also depend on the kind of color you get, whether you used alum, iron, copper, tin, or even rhubarb leaves for a mordant. After it's been simmering for 60 minutes, you can then turn off the heat and let your wool cool. After you've let this sit in the dye pot between one to two hours or even overnight, you then rinse and wash out any of the excess dye. After that, you let it dry and you have a beautiful colored yarn that you can use for any of your wool projects. After you're done dyeing with your dye pot for 30 to 60 minutes, you then have one skein of yarn ready to go. But if you can use what they call post-mordants or modifier baths in which to modify the colors, the various chemicals used are vinegar to change the pH from neutral to acidic, ammonia or washing soda to make it more alkaline or more basic, or you can add iron or copper baths to make a chemical reaction to it. 
So for example, the purple basil is a purple color that washes out unless you change the pH and it makes it into this big, beautiful net lavender color with an acidic post-mortem bath. If I added iron to that same bath, it ends up into a silvery gray. So you can have the same skein, but two different colors. Rhubarb root, just with alum as a mordant, no modifying bath, is a beautiful gold color. But if I take the same skein and I dip it into ammonia, it turns into this orange coppery color. So you can have a lot of varieties of different colors that come from one particular plant and just by adding or changing the pH. So in our next lesson, we'll be talking about the different plants that you can use, the different parts of the plant, and what are the methods to grow those plants in your own garden so you can have a rainbow of natural colors.